Welcome to the Frugal Frell. I'm Suki, your host. Today we're going to show you how to make bull nose trim. I have here an example of a leftover piece from a project we just did. And I just wanted to show you, this is the bull nose profile here. Now, before we get started with the actual process of making the trim, I want to show you a tool that we made so that making trim becomes an easier process. What I have here in my hand is called a trim maker's fence. And yes, this one is a homemade one. And it simply consists of a flat board here, the fence, and a dog here, and a dog here. This one rests securely into the vise, and this one will be clamped down with a hold down. So I'll show you how we do that right now. So I'm going to tighten up this end. And over time, this fence is actually warped a little bit. That doesn't really matter as long as, you know, as long as you get the edge of the work that you're going to do square. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Now, to get this end, I have to use a hold down, stick it in there, press it down, and pinch it in there. There. Oops, I didn't get that quite secure. So. All right, sometimes it takes frugal frow two hands. <laughs> All right, now, when you use your wood, so this is, say, this is a piece you want to make a trim out of. What you want to do is line it up with a little set screw. Can you see that set screw right there? Okay, so what I want to tell you is that you have to make sure when you make your fence that you get this piece, this top piece, or the actual fence part, securely onto the board. So we've screwed it down and we've made sure it's absolutely square with uh, the edge of this board. Then, to use your trim piece, and here's just an example of a trim piece that you might want to cut. And We don't typically cut anything uh, longer than we actually need for the project. There's a little set screw at the very end. That is to keep the work from sliding as you use your planes on it. And I've just carved out a tiny little hole here, just a little slot to catch the end of this screw. So that's just a handy dandy way to do it. Then for each piece, depending on how long it is, you're going to want to put a set screw in the edge of it. And this set screw just grabs the very bottom of the trim and it goes into this board. So it gets set for each piece separately and that just keeps it from sliding out that way all right and on the opposite end you're also going to have a set screw because sometimes you have to plane opposite the main way that you're planing depend because the grain changes directions in different portions of the wood or you just need to get at it from a different angle and so you're going to put a set screw at the very end and again it's going in at an angle kind of like that this way into the base of the fence and then tighten it up. It doesn't have to be super tight, but just enough to hold it. Then the next thing you need to do, if you haven't already squared off your, your edge that you're going to work on, you will need to square this off. Check with your little square like this. And if it's rough, you'll need to plane it down and then keep checking the square and making sure that is absolutely square. And that will produce a much better trim project. So that's the basic uh, starting point for making trim. And uh, you should make a trim maker's board if you're going to making a lot of trim. It will make your life much easier. Okay, Tom is doing the first cuts to make this trim, and that first cut is simply cutting a rabbit. So he's using a rabbit plane, and these come in various sizes, so the size that you choose would be dependent upon your project. All right, here you can see that the fence is 
proving its worth and keeping the wood that you're working upon securely in place and not moving around when you cut it. Tom is finishing cutting the rabbit. The effort involved will be dependent, of course, on what species of wood you are using, whether it's a hardwood or a softwood. Tom is squaring up the perpendicular edge of the first edge of the rabbit that he cut. When you do this, this just ensures that the other planes that you are going to use to cut the roundovers will actually ride accurately along a perpendicular edge. Next, Tom marks a guideline for the top of the round over that he's going to put on that portion of the trim. He will do this down the entire length of the board. He's not using a marking gauge, he's just using his fingers as a guide. Tom now takes one of his roundover planes to start the bullnose edge. I believe this was a number six roundover. And once again, he will ride the bottom edge along the previously cut rabbit and continuing on down the entire length of the board, he will cut approximately to the line that he did mark on the very top earlier. Tom is finishing the top edge of the roundover with a number two roundover plane. The size roundover planes that you use are, of course, dependent upon how large your trim is, which, of course, is dependent upon the project for which they are being used. Tom uses the spills to burnish the entire length of the bullnose. It just smooths it out, kind of acts like sandpaper without having to use sandpaper. Tom picks up his scraper now to just refine the bottom edge of that rabbit.